Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a Twin Flame Channel and Western Astrologer. And this is a video about the Virgo New Moon 2020. Uh, happened on September 17th, 2020 at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. If you happen to be on the Eastern Seaboard of the United States for the Twin Soul uh, and Divine Counterpart Collective. This particular new moon, um, it's an interesting one. I talked about this much more in the uh, general energy update, so you may want to listen to that. But um, what I'll share briefly here is that this new moon has heavy earth energy, heavy mutable energy. Um, and the theme of this new moon is about rearranging, preparing, shape shifting, um, and to get ourselves ready to move across the bridge to the next season in our dynamics with divine counterparts. So whether you're in union or you romantically, physically in the 3D world, which most people consider union, um, or in your another state of union, um, meaning you've met your twin, but you may not necessarily be together in the 3D world at this time, um, this particular moment in time is the beginning of an end of a very long chapter for twins. Um, and I'll move into discussing this in a twin update that you'll see come out alongside this Virgo new moon. Um, but definitely have a listen to the general update and the general energy update. There's a lot of nuggets in there that will clarify why this energy works the way it does for you, how to work this energy so that you're really getting the best of it and leveraging it from a personal place in your connection so that your connection has the opportunity to thrive. Um, you know, I was listening recently to uh, one of, uh, there's a newer reader on the scene. Uh, her name is, her channel name is A Girl and Some Cards, Tarot. She's an excellent reader, and uh, she had shared that she was recognizing that people on her channel, and she said it so beautifully, that the people on her channel really only watched the love readings, but not the other readings. And she said she was really heartbroken by that because it was all of the information and time and intention she had put into the other readings that made it possible for people to get the best out of what was unfolding in the love reading components. And when people would opt to skip that, but only choose to look at the love reading component, they were actually doing themselves such a great disservice because the tools and the information that would create the clarity they needed to move their love relationship forward all of that information was actually in the other reading. The love reading was just kind of at the high level weather report what's happening, but the actual capacity, the information they needed to make change was elsewhere. And I, you know, I, I heard her say that and I was like, good for you, girl. Like, well, well put, well said. That is amazing that you called it out because frequently I see the same phenomenon happen on this channel um, because people want to know what's going on in their twin connection. But the reality of the way twin and divine connections unfold is by being able to be deeply connected to self while also being connected to the other. Most of us try to operate our connections by trying to figure out how to get deeply connected to the other person, most of the time abandoning ourselves in the process. And the way the energy updates work for the Lightworker and Ascending Collective is that they are the container in which the twin readings are actually understandable. By listening to the twin reading, you're only just, if you're only listening to that, you're getting about mm, 30 to 40% of what actually is going to matter to you. The things that are actually going to shift you and help you move your connection forward are the pieces in the Lightworker Energy Updates that facilitate that first piece of the equation, deep connection to self. So... I share that in both applause and echo with that sentiment um, that there's 
if you really, if you're serious about wanting your connection to actually take shape in a new way, whether you're in union and you want to move past states of conflict and fallout, or you're, you know, in union and you want to be in greater harmony with your capacity to deliver your divine service work, or you're in some state of other wise union connected, you know, spiritually, just, you know, physically in some sort of separation, the general light worker energy updates will help facilitate and ground you into that understanding of self first, deep connection to self first, deep awareness of self first, so that you can make the most of what you can have in the connection, what's possible in the connection. The potential only is unlocked when we are deeply connected to self first and then from there able to stay connected to our divine counterpart, our divine other. So I highly, you know, I echo, applaud, and encourage what she said. I, I agree with it wholeheartedly, and I felt the need to echo it here on my channel um, because it's something that I just, I care for you guys a lot. Um, you know, sometimes I get frustrated and I get like really sad and, you know, I sit and I listen and listen day in and day out and read all your messages in my inbox. And I'm like, gosh, like, you know, God, if there's something I can do to really help people move beyond states of, you know, separation and heartbreak and loss and distortions around love, show me. And the thing that God continually places in my heart to do is to show you how to get better connected to self, to your own truth, to the divine. And that information isn't just in this reading. So rant over. Thank you for listening. Let's get into what's going on for twins at this new moon. <laughs> so as I mentioned uh, briefly, the energy is rearranging, preparing, and shape-shifting. Um, because there is a very new energy coming up very soon for twins as soon as we hit the solstice. Um, and actually just a little bit before that, uh, December 21st, 2020, there's this energy that's coming forward where there's harmonious communication and one of the largest and longest, both union and communication windows opening up for twins. But in order for you to unlock the potential of it, because it's a sextile window, it's not a trine window, the sextile windows require us to do a lot of our own effort in order to receive the benefit. Um, the universe will bestow the blessing, but we have to also have our oars in the water and be willing to row our boat, both twins at the same time, in order to be able to get the benefit of it. So this particular new moon is a preparatory state. This whole year has been a preparatory state for this coming opening grand union window where both twins sit in harmonious signs for a full year. There are aspects of next year that are more harmonious than others, pockets that are less harmonious than others, but this particular time period is kind of like the last call for, you know, getting yourself fully in order and getting right with who you are and where you've been in your connection, where your wounds are, what still has to be worked on so that the coming union window and harmonious communication window for divine counterparts is something that ha you have the opportunity to timeline jump with instead of going back into another cycle of lessons and learning you can move into a, a, a cycle that has a higher octave of lessons and learning that has a lot less challenge and a lot more peace a lot more acceptance a lot more uh, harmony and unity between you and your counterpart for where one another is at whether you know, you're together or not so that opens up, like I said, on solstice, but this new moon in Virgo is the beginning of the end of this last chapter of significant challenge facing counterparts. So my invitation to you is to give yourself the permission that you need to really dig into this last chapter. 
get a personal reading, do some personal shadow work, get yourself grounded in whatever your personal work has been for this year so that when the moment of transcendence comes, you're not still dragging along all the baggage of pre-2020 and 2020. Um, <laughs> where's my notes here? What do they say? Right. Okay. Right. So for the divine masculine energy during this window of time, um, the planet that I read is the divine masculine is Jupiter here at 17 degrees cap Capricorn. Um, and this 17 degrees of Capricorn marks, um, especially this reading, this new moon in Virgo between the full moon and Pisces and the new moon in Virgo here. This is the first time that we're seeing the divine masculine direct after a protracted retrograde period this year. And the divine masculine goes retrograde every single year, but this is now the first new moon with the divine masculine direct. Um, since May 14th, actually. Um, this period between May 14th and then the first week of September, when the Divine Masculine was retrograde, um, you know, normally in astrology, Jupiter represents uh, faith, hope, optimism, our higher ideals, um, our religious beliefs, and what we're willing to strive for, as well as our capacity to expand and grow. When Jupiter moves retrograde, all of that energy, instead of being out in the world, moves internal. And so while we may not be able to find a light outside of us, it's our time and our chance to turn inward and find the light within. This particular movement of the Divine Masculine going direct is kind of like it's a little bit of like staggering out of, you know, round three of four rounds of a boxing match, I should say, or maybe it's not round three or four, it's round two of three of a boxing match. And we'll get back to that analogy in a minute because the three is significant here. Staggering out of it, there's a bit of um, recognition of, wow, this was a very different fight than any other one I have ever been in as a man. This has been a very different battle, and I'm a changed man because of it. We've got the Divine Masculine squaring Mercury here at this time, and in conjunct, which is that Mercury is in conjunct Neptune. So divine masculine square Mercury, Mercury in conjunct Neptune. Um, or, and the divine masculine sextiling this Neptune. So when you put all of this together, you know, there's a particular energy here where it's like all of the things that you've been through, it may be very difficult to communicate right now what they are, what it's meant to you, how it has impacted you, and where you're at as a result of it. Um, in addition to that, these three energies kind of talking together, especially with the Divine Masculine in conjunct the North Node here in Gemini, which is calling all of us toward greater mental clarity and communication. Um, there's two things unfolding at the same time. There's like a steady kind of like, okay, I know this is only three rounds. I'm at the end of round two. I can make it to round three. If I made it through two, I can make it through three because I know after three, I'm done. And there's that steady kind of rebuild of hope and optimism and faith in the future now that Jupiter is moving direct. There's a rebuilding of possibility in our minds and in our energy fields here. Um, even though we may have gotten punched in the jaw and not really be able to talk right now <laughs> is sort of what this energy is. It's like, I can feel the finish line in sight, but I can't really go into processing a whole lot of it with a whole lot of people. So if you're finding yourself as divine masculine counterparts, or even in your own masculine energy, as someone who is in a female body you are going there the parts of us that are masculine are finding it hard to talk through what it is we've all been through 
And no wonder, 2020 has been such a doozy, such a doozy. And so when I say, you know, two rounds out of three down, what I'm talking about specifically here, uh, Divine Masculines, is this meetup of Jupiter with Pluto. What we've got here is Jupiter having done a conjunction with the Lord of the Underworld, um, the governor of death, afterlife, and rebirth cycles, the, um, behold, the holder of all of our fears. Jupiter has met up with this particular figure in the Zodiac twice and will meet up a third time. So we've done two rounds. We've survived two. We've got one more to go. The first one was on April 15th. The second one was on June 30th. And then the last one that's coming is November 12th. And I expect the last one will kind of be a little bit easier because both planets will be direct at that time. That second one, June 30th, was probably the most difficult because both planets were retrograde. The one on April 15th was most likely the biggest shock, all right? Because it was like, whoa, now we're in a whole new world. Like, you know, and when you look back to what life was on March 1st versus what life was on April 15th, yeah, <laughs> it was a pretty big shocker this year how life shifted um, and then what the cascading impact of that meant for our individual lives. So did two rounds. We've got one more. We can see the light on the horizon. Um, we also at this lunation, we have an in conjunct from Vesta and Venus to where the divine masculine energy sits here in the chart. Um, in conjunctions are really hard energies to balance, to make work together. And so you may be finding with these two energies talking to one another in this way, that who you are and what you're meant to do and what you're here to do is at odds in some way, very specifically with the way you make your money. And you may be wondering or struggling with figuring out how to be who you are, who you want to become, and how to be a financially sound person at the exact same time. This is a really tricky thing that most people are navigating this year in 2020. How do I be me in the midst of this global circumstance while also dealing with you know, the way the circumstances have impacted and created a deconstruction in my own life and the structures of my own life. This is a time where you'll feel it a bit challenging, all of 2020 truly, but specifically now to be yourself um, and survive, to feed yourself and provide for others. So while the self is really kind of getting this, you know, one-two punch, the only thing that may make sense to you, because this is very much an either-or kind of energy, the in conjunct, the only thing that really may make sense to you is continuing to make the money any way you can. Since it's the one thing you know you can do that the people around you value, and it's the one thing that if you have a job, or way to make money. It's like the one thing that you know you can kind of hold on to in some way, shape, or form. So it's okay. Um, twins who are in union of a 3D physical romantic sort, this may have presented as a bit of a challenge with how to express your value in the world given how the world is changing and how to rebuild certain structures of your life and maintain your sovereignty and your power at the same time. There's a bit of a conflict between this is what I need to be sovereign and I actually have to do these other things to rebuild, but that might mean I need to borrow money or I might need to stay with other people or that might mean that I have to hold on to this thing I'm really ready to give up and let go of for a little while longer. This could also be a conflict between personal values and how you're living, coming to the surface, coming into awareness, where it's just a particular kind of sharp clarity around this is what I really want. This is where I'm really at. And the two things 
they're not even on the same planet, let alone the same map. So the opportunity for transformation and change is coming. It's definitely coming, but this particular new moon is an important step because it's the step that allows you to have the awareness of how things need to change. This is giving you that clarity so that you can chart a new path forward in your behaviors and actions and in your choices because the divine masculine has been sitting here all year in an earth sign. This energy for our masculine energies is calling us to transform our 3D physical world, our money, our structures, our jobs, not just think about change, but be about change. And this particular new moon has a very heavy earth energy to it with transformation, mutable energy to it as well. Um, so this is about setting the intention both in our spirit and in our deeds. So, you know, if you're listening and you're like, yeah, I know, I see it. I'm just really stuck. Um, this is a great time between now and the end of the year to book a personal reading with me because in the personal reading, we can dive into, okay, what needs to shift here in order for me to take advantage of this energy and be in flow with the energy so I'm not swimming upstream. There is definitely for all of us a divine invitation to change this year, to transform. If, if we're swimming upstream instead of working with the current and using its power as our own, if we're trying to swim upstream, it's just going to be more complicated when we get to the new beginning energy later. We're going to feel more conflicted and even have even more things start to feel like they're falling apart. So to get a personal reading with me, just go to kmoonastro.com. You'll see the personal reading uh, little square link there so you can book one. Most of the readings for October are already sold out. Yes, September sold out weeks ago. There's nothing in September. There is still an opportunity to book for October so that that way we can square up this energy before we close out 2020 so that 2021 can have you are you will be among the people who are catapulting forward instead of the people who are still dragging 2020's baggage behind you. Okay. Um, also, if you are watching and listening and you listen to these updates so that you can understand what your divine counterpart is going through, I highly recommend uh, signing up for Star School. Star School 101 and 201 star, uh, Astrology Basics and the Astrology of Twin Flames will be launching soon. If you're brand new to astrology, uh, 101 is a great place to start. 201 will help you understand more of the things happening uh, as you look at your chart and your counterparts' charts going forward. And if you're already familiar with astrology, know that 101 is a working class. In 101, what we're going to move through is a workbook that will allow you to break down your counterpart's chart so that you can create better compassion and clarity about the parts of them you haven't been able to see so that you can be in better communication and connection with them. And so the value of the 101 class is extremely high for that reason, because rather than just teaching you, here's how astrology works, memorize this, and here's some information about that, I'm going to walk you through how to break down a chart and break down transits and utilize your own partner's chart so you can see what's going on um, in real time there. So uh, 101 and 102 will be launching in another couple of weeks. Subscribe to this channel. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe so that you can be the first to know through the channel. And if you're already subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the private list. The link is below this video. The private list will allow you to be the first to know when Star School launches. I'll tell them first. The first 50 people who sign up will be getting some very special gifts and additional information from me to help them move through 2021 a lot smoother. So definitely get on the private list if you know you kind of like to have those added bonuses whenever you purchase something. Okay, 
So let's talk about what the divine feminine is doing because her heart leads the way was the message my guides gave me this year um, about how 2020 was going to work for the twin flame and divine counterpart collective. And guess what? She's out here at 29 degrees, whereas the divine masculine is back here at 17 degrees. So yep, absolutely. It's her heart leading the way forward. She's further along in the journey of 2020 than he is. And they both stationed in these two signs, Libra, her, Capricorn, him, for the, for the majority of this year, but she's going to leave her station sooner and move into the next sign than he will. He doesn't move until December. She moves literally now. So the very last degrees of Libra, she's had that extended stay in the sign of balance from last November, which is many of you have reported in November, a lot of things shifted between me and my counterpart. They were supposed to. As the divine feminine counterpart moved into the sign of balance, um, there were several things that were meant to happen for her. And now she's getting ready to move into Scorpio, which is all about death, the afterlife, and rebirth cycles, the transmutation and resurrection process. Um, for both twins, you know, whether you're in some sort of 3D physical romantic union or some other state of union, this journey of the divine feminine energy has been about, number one, coming into balance with yourself as she faced off with the sign of the self here, Aries. Number two, seeing your imbalances in relationships for what they are because she's sitting in the sign of relationships and partnerships, seeing them for what they are without blame, without shame, without guilt, without story, without meaning making. This has also been about number three, recognizing where her own masculine and feminine energies have been out of balance and coming into balance because she is a feminine energy, Juno, but both Libra and Aries are masculine signs in the Zodiac. Libra is the only sign that's specifically about balance among all 12 signs. Number four, this journey has been about clarity, clarity about the wounding still clinging to your feminine energy so that you can recognize it and resolve it instead of continuing to use it as a source of identity or a way to make meaning and purpose out of seeming chaos. Releasing the story frees you up to live in divine will and divine purpose and allows you to release the attachment of the story from the ego template in your, in your physical being. And this is because she's sitting here, again, facing the sign of the self, and she faced off very early on in the year with Chiron, who highlighted all of her wounds for her. Number five, this has been about releasing the parental templates of love and relationship so that she can anchor divine love. And this is because she's been squaring off with the sign of family here, cancer. So if you had a family template around love that included lots of destructive patterns, this year was your year to get clear about it, deal with it, release it, so that when we move into the rebirth energy coming very soon, you're, it's no longer a part of what you're rebirthing. It's no longer a part of your energetic framework. Number six, this is also about releasing the structures of a life that no longer serves who we are so that we can align with a life that's a reflection of who we are becoming. And that's because she has been squaring off with the sign of structure over here Capricorn all year where the divine masculine has sat. What a ride. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Have we been in for it this year? Um, divine feminines, you're not the same energy that you walked into 2020 with. You're just not. 
This next bit, the trip of the divine feminine uh, through Scorpio is going to be about shedding the last of our shadow before being reborn into the season of truth and light, which is the sign of Sagittarius for an extended stay in Sagittarius. That'll be a year long stay there as well, mostly a year. So this is, as I mentioned, a great time to get a personal reading because especially as she moves through Scorpio and before she anchors in Sagittarius and even when she anchors in Sagittarius, all kinds of revelation and truth will come up so that you can continue to shed the baggage. When you drop 2020, you're going to be dropping many, many, many years of stuff off at the recycling center so that it's no longer weighing you down. Again, you can get one over at kmoonastro.com. We're booking into October, we're at the end of October right now. Readings will open up for the beginning of November very soon. Both twins will soon move into one of the longest communication and union and harmonious windows that I've seen in some time on the solstice. But our ability to really take advantage of that, as I mentioned at the start of this video, is based on our ability to be deeply connected with ourselves while remaining connected to another person. The 2020 challenges presenting through the feminine energy this year have really prepared our feminine energies to be of service and to be a beacon at a much higher level in 2021. And that's true for both twins who are in union and twins uh, who are in a separated state of union. The Mars retrograde opposite her at this time, here's Mars retrograde, opposite her energy at this time. And she's also in conjunction here with Homea, the creation goddess, um, are showing her where she needs to dig deeper into her own rebuild and reconstruction and where she needs to source her balance so that she can be the sorceress of her life and what happens next. Notice that she sits in air and fire. This is the axis she's been on all year, air and fire. Air and fire are about spirituality and mentality. What comes through the spiritual uh, frameworks and template anchors itself into the mental template next. So there's a real capacity here to call in and create what you want via your spoken word and via your vibration as we move through this cycle. So this is a great time to re-listen to the Sag Gemini Eclipse message, the general one, not the one for Twin Flames, because that's where I broke down now that we have the nodes in Sag and Gemini. And we also have, those are mutable signs. We have a mutable new moon here. This is a perfect time to anchor into what does it mean to bridge ourself from one chapter of our life into the next consciously. What does it mean and how can we actually take what was good from the last chapter, drop what didn't serve, and walk into our future in a way that's both impactful in a positive way for others and providing an expansion of our soul and our divinity incarnate on earth for ourselves. So this is a really... It's just, I don't know, it's just a, it's a transformative time. And we always knew it would be. Virgo season always is. Mutable seasons and mutable energies are bridge energies. They take us from one energy into the next. So I highly recommend, you know, if you're, if a reading isn't right for you, get a healing. This is a perfect time to get healings. This is a perfect time to step into coaching. I've had a lot of coaches on the channel and I've interviewed over the course of this year. Find someone who resonates for you. Get the support you need. Do your shadow work. This particular moment, if you can end this chapter well, it'll facilitate a smooth launch pad for a new beginning. I thank you so much for subscribing, for listening, for sharing this across whatever platforms you've been sharing. And just know that I'm cheering for you in whatever state of union you happen to be in with your divine counterpart. 
this next step is going to be a real breakthrough for all of us in profound ways. So I'm cheering for you. The first step, though, is always get more deeply connected to yourself while also staying connected to your divine counterpart. This is how love opens up on planet Earth for all of us. Thank you again, and I will see you on YouTube soon.